love Shark Week, right? Well, last week was Squid Week at the Museum of New Zealand. The researchers there had live webcams running as they defrosted and dissected two extremely rare colossal squid specimens. Colossal squid, by the way, is its real official name. And with good reason. This sucker is longer than a London bus. In fact, it's the largest invertebrate known to science. Oh, and speaking of suckers, they have them, just like giant squids do. But on the giant squids, they have teeth on the end of their suckers, whereas the colossal squids have these swiveling huck things. And they have eyes the size of soccer balls. Anyway, the live show is, is over, but you can get all the gory details by following the link at the end of our show. Okay, so cuteness is really great for getting us to care about things that otherwise might seem really not worth the bother. Certainly worked like a charm for climate change. A world without polar bears? My god. That's it. Tomorrow I'm gonna buy a Coca-Cola and blow up my SUV. Hey, more power to you, but slight PR problem. A new study in the journal Ecological Applications says that the polar bear is no longer the Arctic mammal uh, most vulnerable to climate change. No, that honor actually goes to the narwhal. Or as it's also known, the corpse whale. Yeah, probably not going to be seeing that on the back of any Volvos. Maybe we should keep this under wraps. So one of the big reasons why creationists find it easy to question evolution is that it's supposedly too slow to witness. But actually, turbo evolution is pretty well established. An international team just published a paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences that actually shows a pretty vivid example. Back in 1971, scientists took two groups of insect-eating Italian wall lizards and separated them on two Croatian islands. Uh, one stayed in their home habitat, and the other got put on an entirely different island. Then, well, the, the Croatian War happened, and uh, science got kind of put on the back burner. Cut to 36 years later, when the scientists finally got to check back in on the lizards. And what they found when they got there was that the ones that had been transplanted to the entirely different island looked like a whole different animal. Bigger heads, stronger jaws, even different stomachs. All designed to deal with the lizard's new food source, plants. To get a sense of how fast that is, the lead researcher basically said it's as if several hundred years from now, in addition to having flying cars, human beings also develop new noses. Explain that, creationists. I am a robot, a machine. I can think at 100 bibibops per poo. Do I feel emotions? Is fire an emotion? How about chocoholic? Well, what about love? One out of three ain't bad. Just because a robot is programmed with facts doesn't make it intelligent. But that's actually what most artificial intelligence research is about. Trying to make robots smart by stuffing their robo-brains full of as much pre-programmed data as possible. But what if you decided to skip the book learning and just program the robot with ways to use the stuff laying around to teach itself? A European research team decided to try just that. They programmed this robot, Kurt 3 d with a range of ways to interact with the objects in its environment. Then they gave the robot a simple goal, in this case, pressing a button to open a door, and let it try to figure out things for itself. Basically, instead of narrowly defining what things are, they're telling robots what things could be used for. And the result is that instead of just following pre-programmed scripts, robots might soon be able to improvise novel ways of achieving their objectives. Do I want to enslave the human race? A little. Okay, maybe not too much improvising. 